Mondays with Mira and today Marge and I have gone outside to make this video because it's so lovely out here and the lighting in my um, interior is pretty dreadful. So anyway, hopefully we'll be able to make some spectacular videos for you. And today we're doing one of my books, Baby Rattlesnake. And this is your classic plot driven book. And I know all the inside scoop on this one because I made it. And this one, um, it starts off with a naughty little baby rattlesnake. And all he wants is his rattle. But he's too young. He's too immature. And the story is very much about um, throwing tantrums and getting things before you're ready for it. And it was originally told by Teata. Um, and she was like a, over a hundred when she was telling this story. And then Lynn Maroney, who's from the, I believe she's from the Chickasaw Nation, and um, she adapted it with Teata's permission, and then I got to illustrate it. And I illustrated it with cut paper and gouache. And I originally made this book in 1989, which is pretty amazing. I'm probably older than some of you folks out there. And then I got to redo it, um, redo some of the art for a, a newer version in 2004. So that makes me really happy. And it's still in print. And that's why sometimes it's really great to go with a smaller publisher where you get less money up front, but your book stays alive for a lot, lot longer. So quite a few generations have grown up with this, this teaching tale. So let's get started. I also got to design the book. Oh, actually, I didn't get to design this edition, but I did design a lot of the elements for it. And this is our half title. And so here's Baby Rattlesnake, and he's looking very naughty. And that makes us want to go, hmm, who is this naughty little creature? And then we open it to a big double, double spread that locates it in place. And so this is clearly the southwest with these big cacti here. And here's baby rattlesnake. And he's a really cute little fella. Um, and one of the challenges for me as the illustrator of this book was um, I was told to make him less phallic. <laughs> Which was a bit of a challenge, as you can imagine. So here we go. Out in the place where the rattlesnakes lived, there was a little baby rattlesnake who cried all the time because he did not have a rattle. And so one of the things that's really neat in this book, there's a lot of repetition that you'll see. Um, I also did a thing of um, including little lizards throughout the book as a kind of second story that kids get to find. So we've established our problem. He's crying because he doesn't have a rattle. He said to his mother and father, I don't know why I don't have a rattle. I'm made just like my brother and sister. How can I be a rattlesnake if I don't have a rattle? Mother and father rattlesnake said, You are too young to have a rattle. When you get to be as old as your brother and sister, you will have a rattle too. So what do you think is going to happen here? You think he's going to want to wait until he's as old as his brother and sister? I don't think so. He just keeps carrying on and on and on, just wailing and throwing tantrums and being a raw brat. And then he keeps everyone awake at night. One of the things I used to do was I always had borders. Because for me, what that did is it established where the edges were, and I knew that that was the defined space I needed to work within. Otherwise, I just kept going and going. And then I started using those borders as a form of subtext. So here we've got the main story of Baby Rattlesnake keeping the other snakes awake all night. And look how miserable they are. And then around the border, we've got a subtle subtext of, well, just because the rattlesnakes are miserable, the, uh, the bats are having a great time because bats love nighttime. So it starts like bringing in this little thing about other realities. 
and it's always good when you can weave different things in in very subtle ways. And one of the things that I want to point out to the writers here are the ways that illustrators bring in their own stories, the ways that they create subtext or the ways that they show things that are not included in the text. And that's partly one of the reasons why the author and the illustrator rarely meet, because the author has their own vision in their head, and that vision can really limit the illustrator. And the illustrator will take it places that the author never imagined. So I just wanted to point that out. So anyway, he really, you know, he's making everyone crazy, so they hold a council. And so then this is bringing in the idea of community here. And in First Nations culture, which is where this book is originally from, the story, um, circles are very important elements. And anyway, guess what they do? I'm going to read this little bit of text out. The next morning, the rattlesnake people called a big council. They talked and they talked just like people do. But they couldn't decide how to make that little baby rattlesnake happy. He didn't want anything else but a rattle. At last, one of the elders said, Go ahead, give him a rattle. He's just too young and he'll get into trouble. But let him learn a lesson. I just want to get some sleep. So they gave Baby Rattlesnake a rattle. And, of course, he's really happy. And he does this little chant. Baby Rattlesnake loved his rattle. He shook his tail and for the first time he heard ch 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 He was so excited. He sang a rattle song. He danced a rattle dance. So we're bringing in, he hears it, he sings it, and he dances it. So those are really sweet elements. And here we are, we have the, the rest of the rattlesnake community walking away in disgust because they know what's going to happen. Soon baby rattlesnake learned to play tricks with his rattle. He hid in the rocks and when small animals came by, he darted out rattling. He made old jack rabbit jump. He made old man turtle jump. He made prairie dog jump. Each time baby rattlesnake laughed and laughed, he thought it was fun to scare the animal people. So. One of the things that I want to point out with this that kids often pick up when I do school visits, the little prairie dog got so scared, he does a little poop. There it is. <laughs> and that got by until after it was printed in the, the, original, um, the original editor and publisher, Harriet Roma, just laughed. And she said, Mira, you are very naughty. But I think naughty goes with a naughty book like this. So anyway, he gets warned, and he decides he's going to do his best trick ever. And so he tricks his parents into telling him about the chief's daughter, what she looks like, so he can look for her. And then he runs off before they can tell him not to do anything super stupid. Not those words, but anyway, you get the drift. And I want to just point out some things, um, some techniques in here. So I used um, different patterned paper. This is just some, um, you know, sand colored paper that I used a toothbrush and flicked that paint on. Um, here it's painted with the gouache to have the diamond patterns. Uh, gouache again. And I edged all the edges just to give them that little sort of finished touch there. Uh, here I used some film for the shadows. And I could have easily mixed up a glaze then. But I didn't know about those things <laughs> back then. Here, I just want to point this out. You have a mother and a father rattlesnake. And I needed to gender code them. Who was the father? Who was the mother? 
And so, you know, I used the traditional pink. I didn't want to use blue, so I used green. But I gave Dad a bowler hat and Mom has lipstick. And my philosophy is that with, with creativity, you can go as far as you'll let your imagination that everyone has these incredible imaginations, and yet we stop ourselves. We say, oh, I can't do that. And to which I say, go for it, unless it's really mean or obscene or, you know, too whack or weird. <laughs> but I really love encouraging people to push your imagination. And so, you know, here I'm integrating different sort of motifs from the southwest like the, the red peppers and I didn't want to use the you know the, the teepee that you see in all you know not in all but in most Native American books and because it just wasn't congruent for that part of the of the states where this story takes place where they actually have hogans which is a very different kind of structure and adobe houses and this is one of my favorite illustrations where he's hiding and he's getting ready to dart out. And then, oh, cried the chief's daughter. She whirled around, stepping on baby rattlesnake's rattle and crushing it to pieces. So, you know, he doesn't get away with it. And I'm just going to show you this totally crushed ex expression on baby rattlesnake. And I'm not going to give the ending away. Is that cruel? Yes. Is there a reason for it? Yes. Can you guess what that reason is? Yes. I want you to run out and buy this book. <laughs> and so does Lynn Maroney. And so does Lee and Lowe, who took over Children's Book Press when they went under. And yeah, it's a great book. It is. I love this book. It was um, reprinted as a Sesame Street read-along, and it's also been made into animation, a little animation movie that my husband saw at 2 a.m. one morning, and it's been printed all around the world, and this book has had legs, you know? So 1989, how many years ago is that? That's a long time. And it stayed because it's, it's a classic. It's a wonderful book, even though, you know, on being immodest and saying that. So I hope you enjoyed my little review. Oh, one last thing I wanted to point out, um, the patterns here, I used colored pencil on those. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I loved having the opportunity to share this book with you. And thank you for watching and thank you Marge for filming. Oh, I forgot. Well, thank you Teada for being wise and wonderful. Thank you, Lynn Maroney, for also being wise and wonderful. I'm not going to thank myself, but I am going to thank Lee and Lowe for reprinting it and bringing it back. I'm going to thank Harriet Romer as the original visionary founder of Children's Book Press. And, um, and I'm going to thank Dana Goldberg for overseeing the redesign project. Thank you. Bye.